The United States, Romania, and many other nations are urging their citizens to leave Russia immediately, to make independent plans and find out ways outside of the country. Now, a lot of people on Twitter are asking, well, who on earth thinks it's a good idea to visit St. Petersburg this time of year? And the answer is uh, people with dual citizenship. Probably the overwhelming majority of foreigners from the West, which are still in Russia, happen to have dual citizenship. And the reason that all the governments are asking these people to leave is because they can get drafted. And this is due to numerous reports on the internet, some of them that have been confirmed, that people who shouldn't have gotten mobilized have gotten mobilized. And if you happen to be a person with dual citizenship and you do get drafted, even though legally you shouldn't, well, who's going to help you? Uh, most embassies operating in Russia right now have limited resources available. And this is the reason governments are urging people to leave as soon as possible. Now, what I noticed is that a lot of blue check marks and other people on Twitter are not wasting any opportunity to be evil in public. If it's socially permissible to say something vile, uh, they do not waste the opportunity to jump on it. And in this situation, there have been videos of many people trying to flee the draft in Russia. And you have the blue check marks going like, eh, go back where you came from. You're not refugees. You're not fleeing war. You're just cowards who do not want to take the responsibility of rising up against your government. And you're looking at these people and uh, many of them are elderly uh, you you kind of get the feeling that they don't want to fight but if the blue check marks would have their way they should stay in Russia so they get drafted and mobilized and turned into soldiers I, I don't understand like the logic of these people again uh, like if a combat situation would come into their country I, I'm curious if they would flee or they would rise up against the government as if it's something very easy to do I mean, if life was so simple, there would be no authoritarian regimes anywhere around the world. If all you have to do is to rise up against the government, well, then there would be no Soviet Union. There would be uh, no communist state. There, there would be no theocracies. You know? Everything would be a democracy. Holy shit. You know, but again, people on Twitter, what can you expect? Now, there have been nations which decided not to allow draft dodgers to get past their borders. But there have also been nations like Germany, which classifies them as refugees and is allowing them to come in. However, yet again, then on this channel, I will mention, just like in the previous refugee crisis, a healthy dose of skepticism should be applied. This is not just me mentioning it. It's even uh, one of the Estonian politicians, which is speaking on behalf of many others, pointing out, that among the throng of Russians claiming to be dissidents or opponents of Putin attack on Ukraine, there are sure to be a number of little green men. In other words, military operatives. Little green men is the memorable label given to the Russian soldiers who annexed Crimea in 2014. They were greenish camouflage but no official Russian army insignia. Keeping a straight face, Putin pretended they were local volunteers and self-defense groups. These days, little green men can refer to any covert operative. These in turn represent just one of the many vectors the KGB trained Putin uses for hybrid warfare against the West. So, places like Germany are in a difficult position where, indeed, you do have throng of people coming in, but you do have to vet them somehow. I don't know what the solution to that. I'm pretty sure the German taxpayer has very wise politicians on the payroll in order to figure out how to vet which people are actual refugees and which people are the little green men. I do assume that a person that's over the age of 60, for example, is probably not one of those little green men. It's just off the top of my head how I would do one of the filtering. Uh, but you need to also take into account the fact that the Ukrainian president, Zelensky, is urging Russians to surrender or to flee to the West where they're going to find shelter. So it, it is true, like, the, the thing is, and, and this is what the blue check marks don't understand, is that any person that manages to flee Russia is one less soldier. Like, at the end of the day, the, the limit of the manpower that Russia is capable of is finite. 
It's not, it's not like a strategy game where Russia can just summon soldiers from the barracks. So the more people that flee, the worse it is for the Russian economy, the, the worse it is for them to draft. I, I don't understand that this whole thing where it's like, oh, well, we need to be mean. Oh, keep them in. If you keep them in, they're not going to turn against the regime. They're actually going to go and they're going to fight. Um, I, I, I don't get Twitter, honestly. It's, it's bewildering. But uh, let me know what you think. And it would be interesting if uh, they come up with a way to sort them out. I, I have no idea how they're going to manage because, yes, it, it is actually a legit problem that there might be military operatives uh, within the groups, which can, of course, then uh, try and travel back to Ukraine and do acts of sabotage or gathering intel behind enemy lines. The possibilities are endless. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.